Uh, we're going to talk about N of X today, and I just want to point out right away, Johnny Boy has to subscribe to the Patreon because he said if we talk about it, he has to subscribe to the Patreon right here. We'll include a link. We want to welcome our newest <laughs> Patreon member, Johnny Boy. Welcome, Johnny Boy. It's nice to have you. N of X just crashed from basically 20 plus in the last month to now 11, 10 bucks, 11 bucks. And I had a buy just set for the last month or two for around $11 and it hit, boom, a thousand shares in my pocket. All right. That came so fast. That came faster than I was ready for, honestly, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Now, funny, we're going to get to the earnings call. Enovix made $8,000 total this quarter. I have spent more on the stock to buy 1,000 shares than Enovix made in the entire quarter. Yeah, so, yeah. Am I making a mistake? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been watching them with, a, with my side eye. <laughs> yeah. I keep that side eye because it's probably going Yeah, down. I, haven't, I haven't made the, made the leap just yet, but I've, I've been watching them with the side eye there. This, this is what happens when you leave buys in the market and it just fills when you're not yeah, even paying attention. Yeah. But but then again, I mean the, the price that you set at the at the time that you set it, you know, you set it 20 bucks. You're like, if this drops 45%, I'll pick some up. And then it hits, right? Boom. And like two days after we were discussing it at 17 bucks. Right. Okay. So we're gonna talk about the the call that they had, the Q3 call. So let's listen to that. We're not gonna listen to the whole thing. So if you guys want to listen to the call, we'll include a link somewhere below that you guys can listen to the entire call. Uh, if Enovix provides it, I think they do provide it, but it will include, we'll include a link or Seeking Alpha also has this. And we'll listen to that, the, the beginning, we'll listen to some of the questions and we'll discuss what we feel about this company because I'm now an investor for reals. For you, when you say I'm an investor, that basically means I'm I'm going to talk a lot of shit about the company now. Oh, and now just like- And no one can, here. and you can't say anything to me. That, that's basically what that means. Right, and that's why we'll be on our Discord talking smack about Enovix all day. But here we go. Yeah. Um, we are actually bullish long-term. For anybody who doesn't know what they do, they make little batteries. They're silicone anode batteries. And it's hard apparently to make batteries out of silicone anodes. I don't know the manufacturing processes, but this is what they're doing. And apparently they have a lot of patents on this. They are like next level tech, super fast charging capacity. If they're right, it's the next level battery. So Enovix is still in the beginning. It's still a startup. I wouldn't consider it. It's very risky. Okay, I'm just going to point that out. It's super risky, at least in my opinion. So this is the Q3 2022 earnings call. And uh, like I said, we're not going to listen to the whole thing. We're going to listen to a piece of it. Anyone wants to listen to the whole call, then, you know, go listen to it on your own time. Don't come and bother us and tell us that we're talking in the middle of it, because that's, that's why you come to the channel, to hear us BS about these stocks. I will now turn the call over to Harold to begin. Harold? Thank you, Charlie, and thank you, everyone, for being on the call today. Enomics made strong progress in the third quarter that advanced our goals to continue commercializing what we believe is the best product in the lithium-ion battery market that will allow our customers to deliver transformational features and products to the world. This is evidenced by the strength of our large revenue funnel and increasing engagement with leaders in portable electronic products and EVs. We have active engagements with six mega-cap technology companies two of which we have design wins with. And today, we are announcing a non-binding MOU with one of these leaders. Under this agreement, Inovix and this customer will work together to leverage our technology across their broad product portfolio and further collaborate on our technology and manufacturing scale-up. We believe we are well positioned in the portable electronics market overall, with more than 75 accounts clamoring for our products due to our technology leadership and energy density and safety. We continue to grow our global reach throughout Asia and have engagements with leading smartphone OEMs in China and major consumer brands in Japan and Korea, including Samsung. I want to do point out that uh, this is actually interesting because uh, they're saying clamoring for our products, 75 accounts. So there's 75 companies that are like basically fighting to get their hands on their products. Yeah, but this is if, if he's using the correct word or terminology in terms of clamoring, that implies that we're not going to be able to keep up with demand. At least to me, that implies that. So assuming they can even create the batteries and, and, and provide the demand. But that that's just interesting that they do have 75 accounts clamoring. I kind of I kind of like that. Changing your battery technology, especially if you're a small uh, portable electronics company, is a massive change, right? Um, and so if something goes wrong with that, that, that would be a headache for a company. So... I would like a little more clarity on that. What do you mean by clamoring? Like, right? I, don't, I don't know. It would be nice. To, maybe there's a question to follow that up, but 75 Hope accounts. So, yeah. And also what if 75 accounts only want 10 batteries each, right? Who cares? That's my, that's my point. 
a lot of times on these, they're very careful how they word things. Yeah. Especially on earnings call, right? You want to word it in the best possible light. So, all right, let's keep going, Harold. Come on, Harold. We are also seeing strong interest from leading automakers, given our fast charge advantages. And in the third quarter, we shipped production cells for initial testing to a tier one EV battery supplier and a top 10 global auto OEM. Our task remains to scale the capacity for our revolutionary product with our Gen 2 Auto line, the engine of growth for the company. So they're doing eventually batteries for EVs, but right now, I just want to be clear, they're making little tiny batteries for like watches and maybe cell phones and AR, VR devices. That's what it's heading towards in the next three, four, five years. So yeah. I know we have some bulls in our Discord, which everybody should go check out, but I would not count on this EV battery thing to be scalable soon. I would I would highly advise people not to be expecting that to happen, even though they're sending out some tests. But, you know, that could take forever. That could take a decade. We don't know how long that could take until it's right. scalable. to. A look, at when the, look at when the 4680 was announced that we're still waiting for real adoption of that. And that's someone who makes EVs. <laughs> right. And that's Tesla also, who's like, um, um, you know, a manufacturing juggernaut. Right. So it's it's good to temper your expectations. Yeah. So this is, I believe, after 2025 and not my, part of my thesis why I'm even buying it. I'm buying it because of the little batteries that are more powerful, last longer, have interesting architecture. Uh, we didn't discuss anything about Enovix, but they're also, if you puncture them, there was a cool video with TJ Rogers, the guy that we all believe, like for Enfei, the guy, the guy behind Enfei. Yeah. yeah. The guy who's going to save us, okay? Our new saver is TJ Rogers, not Elon Musk. That retirement. <laughs> you punk, puncture this battery, it doesn't catch on fire it actually controls its its burn it's slow basically it's a lot slower it doesn't burn and it's not as dangerous as conventional lithium ion that's why we're investing in this supposedly that this is just a better battery but i think it's the charge time honestly i think the big thing is the charge time it would it, it, if you think about it adopted at mass scale it could make uh recharging a battery as the same as get pumping you know 20 gallons of gas for anyone that doesn't know this is um enovix website i'll make it bigger that's good. We, we finally get to show the battery. For those people who don't know who, what Enovix does, that's the battery. And here it is. It's uh, Enovix.com. A different product. You can guys, we'll put a link to the to the site. Enovix 3D silicon lithium ion cell, layer upon layer of innovation. Okay. Ready to power tomorrow's tech today. Enovix has designed a high energy, high capacity battery to power the technologies of the future. Novel 3D architecture and constraint system. Constraint, shout out to Constraint. 100% active silicon anode, high energy density and capacity, designed and assembled in the US. Let's go to the charging. That's what I want to say, the charging. Okay, so here's the battery. Interesting. Enovix cells have a stainless steel constraint system surrounding the cell, limits the battery from swelling. We also reorient the electrodes to face the small side of the battery to decrease the required constraining force. Okay, great. To your point about safety, designing a battery that's that's super safe, especially if you have a wearable technology like a headset, the battery is really close to the most vital parts of the human body, right? And you would want, if you're a manufacturer, a traditional lithium ion battery, if you've ever seen even when a, a Samsung phone explodes it's it's dangerous man and so as a manufacturer if you had a, the choice you would obviously pick a battery that would not burn or you know or or maim your customers i know i agree it sounds like it's very useful but uh the one thing i still don't have clarity on is how many other manufacturers especially chinese manufacturers because this is a commodity batteries are commodities okay and tesla's mm -hmm. trying to make it so cheap uh, obviously, the, the, there's a, a thing with manufacturing that's difficult, that someone could have a monopoly on manufacturing for a while. You can get patents on this. So I'm hoping and you're hoping that Enovix has a patent that will last, I don't know, a decade where we can profit from this commodity for a little bit of time. That's what I'm hoping for, at least. But even if they didn't, like if they, open, if they opened it up and opened up the patents, I'm sure they'd be making some money on the back end of it, right? I mean, if they uh, let other manufacturers use their patents to- Yeah, let other manufacturers. Manufacturers use the patents. I'm sure they'd be able to still make money somehow. The other thing too is it's a massive market, so it's like they they can't do it alone. At least that's the idea, of the way Elon Musk explained it, right? We can't do this alone. So there's there's plenty of there's plenty of things that need batteries in the world that everybody can get rich, <laughs> including right, investors. The reason you know? this is is important for us as investors is because we're assuming that this is unique. That there's not another. 10 players going to make the same thing because then the price will just drop. The reason Tesla is so valuable is because there aren't 10 players making cars as good as Tesla, right? That's why. right. The reason end phase is so valuable is because there aren't 10 other end phases making something just as great as end phases, but eventually they will. At some point this happens where it becomes a commodity. I don't know when that happens, 
but I don't want to be in this anymore if it does become that. And why then you want to be long gone. I, I mean, because look, you can, you can take an end phase inverter right now and cut it in half and see what's inside and, you know, and then just reverse engineer it. But the scale um, is missing for anybody else to do that right now. So end phase is the right. clear leader because they have the manufacturing, the scale, uh, the leadership, mm -hmm. all that stuff is happening. So somebody has to build that up. That'll take a long time. So I can make my 10X and leave after that point. And yeah. is still a startup. Like you can buy them out. Anyone can honestly do their copy, their technology, at least in China and pretty fast if they're not already working on it. I'm sure they are. So this is a much more riskier play. That's my point that it's not as simply, it's not as simple that we're going to get our 10 hundred X's in this. It's more like we might, or we might lose everything. That's what I feel. There's a little bit of gray area, I think in between. Remember Romeo like, Power? You know, huh? <laughs> no, I, you know, <laughs> You know, I never even told you they, um, you the every time you mention it. I woke up, I woke up, I woke up like two days later and I had, it converted all of that to like Nikola shares. I've been, I sold it so fast, oh, man, but still they can, it converted all of the, the Romeo power to Nikola shares. Uh, real quick, before we continue, this is an article. Enovix, a Silicon based EV battery hits 98% charge in 10 minutes. This is great. Oh, okay. Charging times are hugely important are a hugely important factor when it comes to driving the adoption of EV vehicles, and we're seeing exciting advances aimed at getting users back on the road with minimal delay. U.S. startup Enovix hopes to play its part in all of this with a next generation battery design, which it says can now be nearly completely recharged in less than ten minutes. Technology outfit ABB has what it says is the world's fastest electric vehicle charger with an ability to fully charge a car in fifteen minutes or less. Enovix is working to undercut these figures with its proprietary battery architecture that features an EV class cathode and anode made from silicon fashioned into a 3D cell architecture. If you yeah. can charge a car under 15 minutes or even in 10, 80% of it or so, I mean, that's it. Gas is dead. Like that's it. It's over. Yeah. That would be the, that would be probably the nail in the coffin. Then I think the conversation people would switch to the range, the range, the range. I can't go 500 miles on a charge. It's like, it's the last time you drove 500 miles on a tank of gas. You would just push them into that corner. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, you're not gonna, you're not going to convince those people at all, which is fine because that's why the opportunity is presented to us, that we are understanding that this is happening, whether we like it or not. That's the main thing. I'm not giving my opinion whether EVs are going to win. They're okay. clearly showing they're going to win. Isn't that like obvious to rational people at this point? They are, and this is something I meant to like talk about. Talk about what you. It might be a little bit off topic. We feel that because EVs are the future. That it's a guarantee, right? Like at a certain point, everyone's going to get on board. It's not a guarantee, you know. Like, like it's even guaranteed. with Tesla, the hatred. No, the the guarantee is that EVs will become the dominant vehicles on Earth. But it's not a guarantee that our stocks will necessarily do well. There's a lot of people that say hate Elon Musk, and for that reason alone, the stock may never hit our price targets. Like it's a, quite a possibility that they will always find the reason to keep the stock low. Even if it's the superior technology, even with smash record, record breaking, crushing quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter, they can still always find the reason to short the stock. Oh, no, I, I agree. But if Tesla does continue to show actual free cash flow growing, the stock market is known to actually price in the free cash flow eventually. So even in the interim, like it's ridiculous. Even I agree at this point, Tesla's like worth buying just because their PE is dropping for a growth company growing at 50 plus percent that the free cash flows are growing. You should be valuing that. And at some point people will in the interim, in this weird environment, you know, whatever it's down, we get to accumulate more. I don't see that as such a big issue as everybody keeps talking about. I just feel like I get to buy now a bit more Tesla than I originally thought I would. First yes, Tesla. yes. Like, oh, I was definitely. done buying Tesla. I was actually done. I was like, okay, we're going to the moon. Excellent. I don't have to worry about right. it. Bags <laughs> are packed. <laughs> okay, we're staying on Earth for a couple more months. To tie it back to Enovix, right? Because this is, an Enovix, <laughs> this is an Enovix video. You're like, what's Enovix? To tie it back to them, one of the reasons why I am looking at Enovix is because, you know, a guy like Elon Musk, a, co a company like Tesla, or even a company like Enphase, the companies that I believe in have a certain culture and they're run a certain way where the best ideas win. If Enovix's technology is really where they say it is, then it's going to be adopted. This is not an, in question, right? So this is really just a matter of, can they prove that their tech actually works? Is it as safe as they say it is? Is it as reliable as it is? Are the costs to produce and manufacture? All that stuff makes sense. It's a no brainer. It is a slam dunk because we need this technology. And I cannot see how large scale EV manufacturers and portable device makers don't 
adopt this. That there's just no, there'd be no other game in town. It was, someone said something really great about Enphase, actually. They said there's a, a cost of doing business not using Enphase at a certain point. And that's what, what would ha happen with um, um, Enovix. There'd be a cost of doing business, a negative cost of doing business by not using that technology because it automatically makes your current technology like obsolete. Yeah, I mean, the issue I have with Enovix is as long as their technology, they can scale. That's the important part you said, that they have to actually be able to produce enough of it. Because if they can't produce enough of it, and this quarter, if we continue the quarter, they have not produced enough of it, and they've stopped production on one of their lines, their first gen line, in order to work on the second gen line. So this is the mm -hmm. issue why their stock took a big tumble, because they basically said, we're stopping all work, current work. We're going to focus on the future, which is next year. And everybody's like, we don't care about the future. <laughs> we care make about 400 million of these batteries. Yeah, yeah. We care about the now, dude. And it's <laughs> yeah. that kind of environment that if you, you're you going to, what? I got to wait another year. So I'll buy you in a year when you're, when you're proving yourself. So this is the risk here that if 2023 comes around and they don't make what they said they're going to do in 2023, all of a sudden now it's 2024. So me and you are sitting on a debt stock for years. But that's when that's when you bring the TJ Rogers effect into it. He knows everything we don't know, right? Oh, the dude's the dude's involved in this. He knows everything we don't know, and if he's involved and he's and he's a believer in it, to a certain extent, you just gotta take that at face value, you know. You show uh, whoever's editing this, me or you, but let's show TJ Rogers right here somewhere, big oh, face right in between us here. I'm gonna make some space for TJ. Oh, he'll be on the thumb. He'll be on the thumb. Well, the reason I want to show TJ Rogers, <laughs> and I'm never gonna go back to the call, but. This is the guy that I feel we're betting on in terms of like, because it's just another battery play at the end of the day that I don't know the management team as well. Red, as. Red, but, 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 uh, actually, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> <That's on>. TJ. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy, this is the guy that's going to make we're you on. rich. <laughs> TJ Rogers, baby. Uh, no. Okay, let's show the real guy. He's a, he's a, for anyone who's not aware who he is, this is an old timey engineer. Cypress Semiconductor is what he started his his company. There we go. That's made, the TJ Rad. He's the one who made Enphase what Enphase is today. So we are literally betting on this guy, or at least I am. Like uh, I I agree the technology is very interesting for Enovix, but without TJ Rogers giving his like uh, uh what is it a, a stamp, stamp of approval? Yeah. I would not invest in Enovix at this point because I would just wait till they're much further along in their uh, in their production and actually the, the factories are running and I get, I would miss some upside, but I would have zero downside once that happens. At least I think at this yeah. point, there's a lot of downside, but TJ's involved. I feel like if he's dumping money into it, of course you can risk it. He's a billionaire, but I believe that this guy knows what he's doing. So I think that's my, my, my bet on this is actually TD Rogers. Mm -hmm. Agree. No, agree. And if you haven't liked and subscribed already by now, like what are you waiting for? All right, if you came in for the first time, if you're at this point in the video and you haven't hit like and subscribe, we're gonna wait. This is your chance, hit like and subscribe. And while you're at it, join our Discord. If you have something to say to us and you wanna yell at us, just do it over there, please. And if you really hate us, <laughs> become a patron and you can basically, you have the right to say whatever you want. <laughs> it's yeah. it's a cup of coffee a month. And you can let us know if you want us to say something else because uh, we love our patrons and we'll obviously uh, help you guys get the content you want as well. Uh, and this video was actually at the uh, request of a, our newest patron, <laughs> Johnny Boy. All right. Uh, why don't we show Johnny Boy real quick? All right. Uh, let's go to our Enovix just to show our Discord. Enovix, Enovix channel, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of discussions here in Enovix, so everybody should join the Discord. That's free to join. The Patreon has some extra perks that you can join at four ninety nine, of course. But Johnny Boy, here you are. We're, we're pointing you out. Remember, <laughs> since August 5th, two, 2021. Johnny boy, we expect you to be our new Patreon member, probably at the 1999 level, considering you have enough to buy Enovex stock. I think, no, you know what? He should get his own tier at 49.99. Yeah, we're gonna make another tier for you. Yeah. <laughs> we made excellent progress on Gen 2 during the quarter, including placing initial purchase orders for our laser patterning, assembly, and packaging lines for long lead materials, design, and proof of concept projects to demonstrate the design improvements built into Gen 2. These 47 projects are presently being completed with our key vendors and have thus far validated the design concepts and improved performance of Gen 2. We have also placed a follow-on purchase order for the remainder of system fabrication with our packaging equipment vendor and expect to do the same with our and battery assembly vendors in the next several weeks.
We believe that we remain on track to land our first Gen 2 line in the second half of 2023. So let's pause this. This is what the issue is, why their stock tank, because their second line now is 2023 second half, which could mean almost 2024. Like that could be a year and change from now. So I think that's the issue that they're having. Yeah, well, we'd have to know what the financials are, but it doesn't seem like they're worried about funding themselves through then. That in and of itself is not a bad thing, right? It, it's, it's new emerging technology that could potentially replace all of the current lithium ion batteries. For example, like Arkhamoto, we were really concerned that they didn't have the cash to sustain them as they tried to open up and build all these new things. It's clear that this company is not concerned funding themselves through through 2023. If you look at the balance sheet, you see that they have on the books around $350 million. Okay, great. How much did they spend? So at least uh, operating trailing income. 12 months we're talking about, by the way. Right. Operate income, but here it's net income. It's roughly 125 million. Let's say they're spending somewhere around there. So they technically have two to two and a half years. Two and a half years, right of runway at this point. So are they in immediate need of, uh, or, or going bankrupt immediately? No, no, you have like two years to find out whether they can actually create a business. I think what's gonna happen is they're gonna raise more money and dilute shareholders. But to your point, it doesn't look like they're running out of money tomorrow, as opposed to Arkhamoto, which is running out of money today. So it, yeah. that's the difference here that they actually have a bit of run rate. And if they get some orders, it, even at the end of 2023, we're still okay if they wait till yeah. 2024, 2025 to actually ramp up that kind of stuff. Massive dilution. If anyone wants to buy their shares, shares tanking up the was, you know, like just straight down. So this is very risky. That's that's my point. It doesn't seem like a it's risky. A stock. It's it's risky. But to but to your point, if they continue to raise capital between now, like what's the market cap of the company right now? What's their market cap? Let's take a look. Current market cap is right here at 2.83 billion for a company that makes nothing yet. Remember, there's nothing being sold really right now. Right. The stat on their price to sales, 580 price to sales. But that's why at the level that they're at, a metric like the price to sales just doesn't, I, I don't even look at that. There's You're not, not investing in it. Like Jeremy from financial education, would, his head would explode <laughs> right now. You know, he, He'd recommend that you short it. Yeah, the, the price of sales, the revenue means absolutely nothing. I agree here. It's more that bet that if they have a real technology and TJ Rogers is the real deal, right? which, we, which we know he's the real deal. If he, can, if he believes in it, then it gives me some confidence that they have at least a, a plausible way to become a real business. And then we do have our 10, 20, 30 Xs from that point on. Well, I, I feel confident that TJ feels confident that this company <laughs> will solve this and we'll get it to market and we'll get it in customers' hands. Like, I don't think that that's a concern here. It doesn't say, and, and they're not concerned about the financials in a short enough term period where they could get this thing to market. Again, I look back at a company like Arkhamoto, no one doubted that, that if they got it to scale, it could be adopted. The problem was having the money to get it to scale, that upfront cost. Um, yeah. I think they've got the upfront costs that they need in the bank. This is Enovix I'm saying. Well, it looks like Enovix was a bit smarter in this respect. They actually have a lot of cash on the books that they're keeping because they know they need some runway. Yeah. Why other companies don't understand this is beyond me, but that's just the way life works out, I guess, sometimes. Okay. Did you say why companies don't understand this is beyond meat? Yeah. Why doesn't beyond meat understand it? <laughs> <laughs> why is it beyond me? We're talking about Enovix. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the call. In total, over the last nine months, we've incorporated over 120 learnings from Gem 1 into the detailed designs for Gem 2, resulting in a line that can assemble and package many more batteries in the same footprint for significantly less capital for batteries. I'd like to highlight a few areas that illustrate why and how Gem 2 is such an improvement. First, we have a laser pattern electrode form factor that allows us to deliver breakthroughs such as a 100% acrosilicon anode and safety innovations like brake flow that uniquely address thermal runaway. Laser patterning is at the core of our technology, and we must become a world leader in that field. To support our vision, we announced today a collaboration with IPG Photonics, a global leader in laser technology. It already resulted in our Gen 2 lasers having 5x the power of our current Gen 1, far ahead of our original scale-up plan. Second, in stacking, we are eliminating a frequent manual alignment of four independent punch heads and replacing them with a single punch head that stacks four batteries simultaneously. This is an example of one of the proof-of-concept projects we launched months ago that has already been proven out long before the production tools are even built. Thirdly, we are making a major change in how we transport and process batteries. In Gen 1, we use a low-precision, low-speed conveyance system that moves batteries between each assembly station. For Gen 2, we have replaced it with a high-speed, high-accuracy linear motor that has only become recently available. This eliminates the need to move batteries on and off the track, 
increasing throughput and reducing the complexity, size, and cost of the equipment, as we can now process on the track directly. In addition, we expect it to prove our process capability and yield, as the accuracy of the linear, linear motor is often better than the Gen 1 fixturing. And lastly, we have learned in Gen 1 how critical automated vision systems are for both inspection and metrology. They detect issues instantly, drive fast with yield learning, and increase equipment uptime. We have added significantly more metrology to Gen 2 with this learning. Given our high and increasing confidence in Gen 2's superior performance, it has become clear to me that we must begin redirecting resources to Gen 2, even at the expense of the ongoing improvement activities of Gen 1. From the beginning, we knew that improvements and learning in Gen 1 were less about making Fab 1 run better and more about making Gen 2 as perfect as we could. Our goal is to replicate multiple Gen 2 lines in the future, directly on our own and indirectly by licensing and joint ventures with a roster of high-profile customers and potentially incumbent battery readers. For those of you familiar with semiconductor history, it is our blueprint for copy exact. We believe that the result of this change in emphasis will be lower volume from our Gen 1 lines in Fab 1 and Gen 2, and those Gen 2 ramps in 2024. It was a tough decision, but I feel it's the right one. Now I'll turn the call over to Stefan. We'll discuss our financials, and after that, I'll make some closing remarks. Stefan? Well, let's pause. Let's discuss, because uh, he said a lot of important stuff, and the main reason why the, the stock literally cratered 50% in a day, which is Gen yes. 2 line. He's giving up on the Gen 1 line. He's like, it's not worth it. It's going to cost us more money, basically. We're going to wait for the Gen 2 line. But now it says it's not ramping till 2024. So 2023 is when they're, they're starting that production uh, at the later half. But the actual ramp is in 2024. So now we are sitting on a stock that may be, like I said, dead for a little bit, like at least a year. What's funny is that one of those lines in, in that in what he just said is is what I want to hear from a company like this. I was looking for the quote, but there was a quote that said something like um, advancements, like the, the major advancements have occurred by not perfecting old technologies, by, but, but by replacing them with newer and better ones. And that's a tough call to make, but it's smart. That makes me bullish on the company. That makes me feel like the leadership has their head in the right place strategically. And again, if they're not worried about keeping the doors open and keeping the lights on for a year or two, yes, pivot now, do it now. Right. Well, yes and no. I'm also of the belief that it's okay to iterate. So uh, he could have iterated, released some product out, got some more buzz, kept the stock. When he diluted, it would be better for investors if he diluted at 20 bucks as opposed to now if it drops under 10. So it's that FUV play where they kept talking about the Gen 1X is coming. That's the next thing. We should all focus on that. Well, yeah, maybe, but why don't you make some money in the meantime? So I kind of feel like there's two things at play. Having said that, Enovix does have $350 million in the bank, so they have some runway, I guess. But 2024 is around the corner, and that could lead to a situation where they're not ready yet, and they might be in a hard place, along with us investors, if they're not ready. You see what I'm saying? There was a lot of vagueness at the top of the call, but if they just announced which OEM maker they're working with, right? They said they're working with a top 10 leader in um, an EV maker. Okay. Right? Then maybe you get some information from them. There's a lot that we don't know. Thanks for taking my questions. I uh, want to get some clarification around what is left to guess, be solved for Gen 2. It sounds like you still are on target for second half of 23, but I guess how much more work if you can quantify or what types of areas need to be completed in, in order to be ready for shipping in the second half of next year? And I guess sort of related to that, you talk about now gens and lines and fabs, but you really didn't talk about you know, where this is going to be going, I guess, in terms of a fab footprint. Are you still thinking about the potential for two fabs, or is this, I mean, how much would this be internal capacity or maybe partnership finance or, or other, other means? Yeah, thanks for that question, Bill. So um, I think relative to your uh, first question, um, you know, Gen 2 is pretty far along in the design process, I would say detailed design process, uh, and we expect that we'll be kind of going into final detailed design review towards the end of this year, right? Um, and so, you know, we've got high confidence given the interactions, which are very regular, that that's going to pan out well, but that's kind of your final checkpoint where, you know, you've looked at every single part and you're ready to proceed. Kind of simultaneously with that, we're going to finish up the last of the proof of concepts to just validate the design thing. So I think things, those things are all on, on track and those vendors are moving very quickly. So I'm quite confident we'll be in a position to, you know, get through that and then have that equipment show up in the second half of next year, as we've talked about. Um, relative to your second question, Fab 2, um, you know, for us, the equipment is really the long pole in the tent, and while we've continued to look at facilities and we have multiple options, we haven't made a decision yet, um, we'll do so. Um, you know, we're going to do it in a time that thinks it's advantageous to us, but rest assured it'll be, you know, before that uh, equipment needs to have a home. So, okay, I mean, we should talk briefly about all of this. As you can see, they're so pre-revenue, they're pre-product. Do you know what I'm saying? Like there is no, but they're saying that, but they're saying the right things. They're saying the right things. Like what he's not talking about is ha worrying about having to hire the right people. He's not talking about needing the factory space. Like he's, there's a lot that he's not talking about and he's focusing just on the product and making it better. This sounds like a company that is comfortably and confidently goes to work every day to try to make a product better. That's what you want. And that's not typically what you get in a startup, yeah, right? I know if we were, if we were startup investors, I would say, yeah, that sounds great. But 
I'm not a startup investor besides a MIT terrible OD idea. That's the only one that I've invested in. And how's that? Yeah. <laughs> this is channel, by the way, for everybody. But, right. No, but I, my point is, uh, I expect more from a, a company. So obviously, like, once again, I go back to why did I invest in it? Because the technology is cool, if they can scale it. But number two, TJ Rogers is the play here that he's smart enough to see something we don't, because he's involved in all of this. Uh, uh, let's say green energy battery tech that we're not as fully involved as he is that right now I'm looking at this. If I was just reading this transcript, like think of, think of it, forget about TJ being involved. You're just reading this. You're like, Oh my God, they're not going to make money for a long, long time. That's what it seems like mm -hmm. he's saying. We're still ramping this. We're building this. We got to do this. We got to get these machines and we just bought a laser. Congratulations. Just like when our Komodo bought the forming thing and we were going to save all this money. Yeah. So I hear all Plastics these things again. that are positive for a startup. Great, great, great. As for uh, an investor, it doesn't make me want to rush out and buy more shares. Like I, I have my stake. Now I just have to like wait till more stuff happens until I can buy more shares. Oh, the counter to that would be, okay, so they're not making any money now, right? If you just listen to that without TJ Rogers, even if TJ Rogers is not involved, you would say, okay, so they have the money to keep keep the business open, right? They could be doing anything they want with this money, but they're, they're working on this. They must believe in this thing. And then you say to yourself, okay, even without TJ Rogers involved, someone gave him the cash <laughs> to do this. There's a lot of money behind them that uh, that believes in them. Whatever it is, whether it's retail investors or institutions, people believe that they can do this, or at least they feel confident enough to give them the, the money to do it. Now, in terms of allocation of your portfolio, let's say you have $1,000 a year that you want to allocate to these sorts of stocks, let's just say. So if he's telling you that they're not making any money and you know that the stock's basically going to stay flat for a few years, if it's a, if it really is like a long shot bet, it's telling you you've got two or three years. You could This could be your bet for two or three years you could build this thing. And if it if and when it does take off, the upside is massive. You know, we discuss in our Discord all day, like the price fluctuating, but it's going to be like this for, like you're saying, a year or two. Two, three easily, years, yeah. Easily that this is not going to the moon anytime soon because they're nowhere near to even send a product to anybody. So it's all based on faith right now that this might happen some point in the future. And if the environment gets worse for companies like this, luckily they have some cash that they could withstand it. But after two years, I'm telling you, this is a shit show. This is, if, if the economy doesn't turn and interest rates don't drop within like the two years, that's where we're betting it will, obviously. But this is gonna be very hard for a company like this to keep raising money, incredibly hard. Yes, I, I guess what, I, what I'll leave you with is this. <laughs> Remember where Tesla was for years. You know what I mean? This is Tesla over the course of what is this? This is to 2020. So if you were investing in, you know, in 2010, you had to wait 10 years. How many shares could you accumulate if this is the small allocation of your portfolio for 10 years? I'm not saying you'd have to do that with them. But even um, even a company like Amazon, well, this is this is a bit more exponential. But the idea is it takes a long time to build. If this company is really going to do what they say they can do, it's going to take a while for them to perfect that technology. You're talking about millions and millions and millions of batteries, right? So you really have to get the technology right. But once you get that right, you know, the stock goes up to the right. <laughs> We're going back and forth, but basically, yes, this is the long game here that anyone looking to invest in Enovix, like, yeah, you can start a position now. It's getting to a low enough point to start, but I would say you have like like you keep like you said before you have two years to you have ten years maybe forget about two years, but you have at least two years to accumulate a good position. It's not a rush to get into Enovix. Like for example, if Enphase dropped today fifty percent, I would sell all my Enovix and buy Enphase because right. it's just an easier double, triple, quadruple for me. I don't have to trajectory. Worry about it. The trajectory is obvious. It, they're printing money right now. They have the product. They're just scaling it up. It's an easier bet. And even if I don't make the, the 50X and I get the 10, I think it'll be okay, right? So mm -hmm. it really matters. So we, uh, uh, to your point, we just can wait. We don't have to scale all in. And even now going back on this call, it may be a little bit more bearish and then bullish. <laughs> it may be. Right. <laughs> but to, 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 to your point, <laughs> to your point let, let's look at that. Now, now that you know, right? Today, Enphase is sitting at $299, but look at this. I mean, if you were an early investor in Enphase at around eight bucks, it immediately tanked. It lost 80% or so of its value. Take a measurement tool. a bit. Why don't you show a measurement tool, like how far it actually dropped? Like this is what this, like, you know, knowing what we know now, this is what happened to Enphase. It IPO'd, it IPO'd, and in 230 days, it dropped 76%. Right. It eventually recovered, right? 
it eventually recovered and that took 650 days to recover and surpass its previous levels right over two and years. then okay. right over two years and then from there from that peak in uh it, it, from that peak on in September of 2014, it proceeded to tank for 970 something days. That's like almost three years, isn't it? Right? It, it lost all its value. Look at that, 97 percent down, 96 and, point something, and hit 63 cents. So if you were an early investor in Enphase, right, and you really believed in the company, and they were saying a lot of the same things that a company like Enphase is saying now. From the moment that you started investing, 1,300 bars. So that's what? That's almost four years. Yeah. And basically, your $8 investment went to $0.65. Cents. Now, if you held or if you accumulated, let's say uh, you honestly, did. I would do this. Why don't you show from when it went IPO to when it went back to that price? How, how long was that? That top? Oh, to go back to, yeah, go back that, to that price? That beginning point all the way to when it went back to that price in, uh, looks like 2018, in the middle of 2018. That took 1,500 bars, so 2,000 days. Yeah, how many years? You're looking at 20, <laughs> 20, six years. It's six years. Exactly. Six years. Yeah. You were holding and holding, and you're a bag holder. And mind you, you, you were also – you also had seen 100% return in a few years, and you also saw a minus 90, a 90% 90 drop in value. Now, if you got through that and you, and you weathered that storm and you were buying at 63 cents – to where we are today, you have a 48,000% return. Crazy. That's 48,000. My God. And some just of the to do a quick, Discord. Just to do a quick, just to do a quick math on that. This is again, because we're talking about just to do a quick math on that. So if you were to go and buy a thousand shares of Enphase at 63 cents, <laughs> it costs you $630. Okay. And now they're say two hundred ninety-eight dollars a share times a thousand. Those thousand shares would be worth two hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. That's your profit, basically, right? You spend nothing, right? On that. You spend nothing on it, and that's and, and that's essentially what you're looking for. So if if you're an investor in Enovix, what you're hoping is that you're somewhere here. Well, well, why don't you bring up, let's end this. We're going to do a part two video to continue the call because we both have to go. But why don't you bring up the Enovix chart? No, bring up the Enovix oh. chart. Oh, right, right. Show where we are in the whole process. And right. So let's see. Yeah. Now yeah. that we see it. And, and again, it's not to say that Enovix is going to do what Enphase did. But the idea is Enphase, Tesla, all these come, Amazon, they were all in. You have to pass this stage from the startup where you have to prove yourself. You have to prove yourself. You have to it, let the markets know. It's basically you do. five minimum to 10 year wait for this to happen. So where are we? We are what, a year in? Yeah, a year and a half. So we're a year and a half in. Anyone who doesn't think we have another like four years of this up and down right. is insane. I just want to point this out. You're insane. Okay. It's going to yeah. take them a long time to do what they're, and they're even saying it. They're saying yeah. we just got fucking laser. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it, it could take them a while, but, but, but then again, like, you know, the, the previous companies in this space, like, like Tesla or Enphase were creating this market and it was, you know, swimming upstream. Right. But now everyone's on board with this stuff. Everyone now knows, look, every, EVs need batteries. Right. And so people are trying to say, well, how do we make batteries better? Right. So it might not be 10 years, maybe, but it's still probably five years, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's I'll not one it. year. It's more than right. It's more than it's somewhere between the one to five years minimum. Minimum. Right. Okay. Maximum is the 10 years, but you're right. The fact that Tesla did a lot of work, Enphase did a lot of work, Solar Edge already did a lot of work. The market is established. Right. We're moving on the S curve up. So this company might have moved a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. But to say it's going to happen in six months, I don't know. That's ridiculous. Like it's still going to no, take no, no. no, no, no. Yeah, we have exactly. so much time to buy this company. It's crazy. That's what I feel. That's part one, guys. We're going to do part two, but still, Johnny Boy, you still got to join us. So that doesn't go away just because we have. Right, right, right. Johnny Boy, yeah. Okay, like and subscribe and hit the bell and see you on part two.